of Peace, political activist Chris Dorsey. I'm really excited about this show. Um, I hold both of my guests in very high regards. Jim Lee and I actually testified um, to the EPA in 2015, and it is an honor and privilege to have you back on the show. Hi, Jim. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Um, how are you doing today? <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. It's been a busy day. It's been an exciting, wonderful day. A great birthday. Okay, I want to start off the show first, Jim, by addressing an issue that people seem to want to, ha you know, have us have beef about the fact that we don't view chemtrails in the same way. I view chemtrails as a depopulation agenda straight from the pits of hell brought to us by our government and military and whoever else is trying to kill us. You, on the other hand, have a different theory about what chemtrails are. I have no problem with this. I appreciate other people's research, and when your research is second to none, um, and I want you to explain to everybody what your research has shown you. So we'll go ahead and start off by burying any hatchet that someone may think that you and I are supposed to have, because we have differing views on what is act actually going on. And you can just go ahead and start off with, I don't know, where do you want to start? <laughs> okay, so, so um, like, like, I don't know why I'm getting, getting computers like that. That is very odd. Let me kill that. So, um, you know, it's okay to disagree with people. And, in fact, you're never going to learn anything from people who are yes people. Um, so what I would suggest to anybody in the audience who may have thought that because Amanda thinks things that you may think are crazy, and you may think that Jim is just right on the money. Well, why would he even talk to her? Well, guess what? You know, I'm not always right. <laughs> um, and uh, so I'm going to I'm going to talk to people who have differing opinions from me because they may actually change my point of view from time to time. <laughs> and it could be the other way around, Jim. People could actually think you're the one that's crazy and I'm the one that's right. Exactly. <laughs> and I've heard that. <laughs> Trust me, I've I've got my own personal trolls to prove it. Um, and, uh, you know, they would say to me, well, how could you not think it was a secret government program? And I'm like, you know, how do you not think that I don't think it's a secret government program? I just don't go around saying it on a daily basis. Um, why? Because, A, um, I would be much more popular if I did. Um, but, B, I don't believe that. So, I think that the, the chances of it being a secret government program get slimmer the more I learn about how cloud seeding works and how chemtrails actually work. Um, so let's, let's just take a step back. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Jim Lee. I'm from Sumter, South Carolina. I'm married. I have uh, two beautiful daughters. And uh, I'm an activist. Like I, I do this stuff at night. Um, there's no advertising on any of my website. I try to keep it, you know, real and pure. Um, and I was a Boy Scout, so this is my good turn daily. Uh, you know, I map pollution. Um, I cover everything from geoengineering to cloud seeding, chemtrails, HARP, uh, New World Order, uh, technocrats, and, you know, slave speak mind control. Um, and what I see from studying all these different categories that pertains to the chemtrail argument is that it's all about, it's a semantic, you know, am I allowed to cuss? <laughs> um, it's a semantic uh, war, you know, it's a, it's a word war more than anything. That people literally on Facebook hating, cussing, banning, blocking for saying contrail instead of chemtrail. <laughs> um, and for me, you got to say, well, when you say chemtrail, what do you mean by that? And there's not a single person who believes it's a secret government program, including you, Amanda, that can argue with me when I say, when you're referring to chemtrails, you are referring to the clouds behind the planes, correct? The emissions, who knows? I believe it's actually... An See, emission. and you use the word emissions, so it's... In is it? In working, I believe it's an intentional spraying operation from nozzles. That's the difference between you and I. You believe it's coming from the engine. I believe it's coming from extended nozzles that have been... Opened. Exactly, exactly. So now we're to the crux of the actual chemtrail problem, intent. Um, if you go to climateviewer.com slash chemtrails, 
you're going to see an article that I wrote where I compiled all this information we're about to talk to um, talk about. And in it, I start with, when I talk to, to scientists, I say contrails. When I talk to people on the internet, I say chemtrails. Because generally speaking, if I use the opposite word when talking to these individuals, they will discount the validity of the things I'm about to say. And that's because in your mind, you know, you've got a, a wall there. You know, if somebody doesn't say the magic word, they must be in this box or on that side. And that's like 90% of the people who talk about chemtrails. Um, for them, you know, if you don't use the right verbiology, <laughs> then you got some issues. Yeah, Jim, I, I, don't, I don't allow anyone to control the narrative of my speech, so I don't, allow, ex, I don't expect you to allow anyone to control your narrative. Of course. Yeah, so we give, we give power to words. Um, on climateviewer.com slash propaganda, you can read an article called The Anatomy of Slave Speak. And what it taught me was that basically you have two kinds of words. You have high-level descriptors, and low-level descriptors. Both chemtrail and contrail are high-level descriptors. And what that means is these words are highly argumentative. They mean different things to different people. And this is a fact. So a good example would be like God. God to somebody who is Jamaican and, and, and you know, is Rastafarian and, or is Hindu or is Muslim or is Christian, God means a lot of different things. So it's a, a high level descriptor. Chemtrail and contrail are the same. There are people that would say a contrail is only the cloud behind the plane that disappears immediately. But then scientists want to call them persistent contrails. Well, well it turned into a cirrus cloud. At the end of the day, 90% of the chemtrail problem is that people want to use all kinds of different words and don't agree on what those words mean. Would you agree? I would say there's a lot of debate on what those words mean, yes. Exactly. So, for me, it really boils down to semantics and intent. So, where I draw the line, what really makes me and Amanda different is that she believes it's intentional I believe it's intentionally unintentional, um, more than likely. Now, I'm going to give some historical context. In the 50s, the United States Chemical Corps sprayed zinc cadmium sulfide from coast to coast from flying boxcars and sprayed radioactive material on all of America. They even went to black neighborhoods in St. Louis and sprayed poor kids. Then, the found their bodies when they died and they ground up their organs to find out how much radioactivity they inhaled because they were simulating a nuclear attack from Russia. So the U.S. military in the 50s was intentionally poisoning people, which they say it's completely non-toxic, but there are videos from St. Louis of survivors who tell of their horrific tales after they encountered this stuff. So they poisoned people intentionally and nobody knew till the 90s, till the, till the 2000s. So if chemtrails are a secret government program, like Amanda says it is, she may be right and we will find out collectively 40, 50 years from now. Goody, when we're all dead. Because that's what happened in the past when the U.S. Army Chemical Corps poisoned all kinds of places all over America during what was called the Manhattan Rochester Coalition, the, the the information wasn't made public till I think it was as early as like three or four years ago is when I read it. It was a, a lady who wrote it all up. Um, but this stuff was, you know, not public knowledge, period. And it would be that way if what you're talking about is the case. But for me, I look at it as, you know, what would be the motivation? Because... If they wanted to just poison everybody and depopulate them, there wouldn't be white, puffy clouds everybody could see. I can kill you with an invisible chemical. I know of, I mean, the U.S. military has something called the gay bomb they were working on. It's a colorless chemical that they can spray and make Iraqi soldiers gay. You can't make this stuff up. 
That's a chemtrail, for sure. It could be launched from mortars, sprayed from planes or drones. Chemtrail. And they're colorless. So if it was a government program to secretly kill everybody on the planet, why the hell can I see it? That was the first thing I asked myself. You know, that doesn't really make sense. Because it's so in your face. And then everybody goes, well, they like to, the Illuminati likes to put it in your face. And I'm like, yeah, it doesn't even make sense to me. So then I really started to look into why are they there? And it turns out they've been there a long time. Um, and Nick West and the, the debunker crew at Metabonk, they'll tell you, oh, well, contrails have been around forever. What they don't want to tell you is that in 1972, the state of Illinois and New Jersey sued the airline industry for what they called at the time smoke pollution of the sky. So in 1972, chemtrails were called smoke pollution of the sky. Basically, the, the airline industry had coated the skies over New Jersey and Illinois to the point where the, the governors of the states were going to sue the aviation industry for blocking out the sun. And I'm not making any of this up. It's on climatepeople.com slash chemtrail. So they got sued for blocking out the sun. And then the Department of Transportation, uh, Secretary Bolt, stepped in, had a mediation between the airline industry and the states and said, look, they're going to clean their act up. So they installed burner cans on every single plane that was, you know, in the industry. And that is what they said reduced uh, particulate pollution by 70%. So basically, they changed the way they burned jet fuel in the engine to where it burned cleaner. And the chemtrails went away. So the question remains, why are they back? And how did they get there? <clears throat> and then I realized that in between 1988 and 1997, 1997 is the official start of the word chemtrail. <laughs> um, it was the first time it was used on the internet was 1997. The first article about chemtrails talks about JP8 jet fuel causing it. So I said, okay, well, this has got to be something I need to look in. We, we got to start at the beginning, right? It's the first time the word was ever used. This guy used it and he said it was JP8. So I started looking into it. For those at home, that is jet fuel. That is military grade diesel jet fuel. You can stop me at any time, Amanda. I'm sorry. I'll, I'm telling the story. <laughs> I'm just like, Jeff, go on. It's your chance to, to tell your story, and then I will ask you questions as to what Totally you're awesome. Okay. All right. So then I realized that. Uh, this, I'm sorry. I think Glenn may have joined us. Oh, cool. What's up, Glenn? Long time to see, brother. Okay, yeah, Glenn and Glenn and Chris are on at 11 o'clock. Did you hear that, Glenn? I'm going to hang up on you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, so in, uh, in 1988, the NATO, and this is kind of interesting because this explains why chemtrails suddenly appeared out of nowhere in 1997. NATO switched all of the, had, had something called the single fuel concept. Let's start there. So NATO came up with the idea that they could save a whole lot of money on military jets and tanks and Jeeps if they all used the same gasoline. JP-8 was born because of that. They said, you know what, I don't want to buy jet fuel for the jets and tank fuel for the tanks. Let's get them both on diesel fuel that can be put in both and we'll save money. Yay! Well, they did that, and between 1988 and 1994, in 1995 was the first year that every single NATO country started using, or excuse me, 1996, every single NATO country started using JP-8. And then chemtrails appeared out of nowhere, started sticking around, coating the sky, covering everything. So the question was, well, what makes JP-8 so different? that it would cover the sky. I said, all right, let's look into this. Turns out the aluminum that everybody's looking for, that everybody says is in chemtrails, is in the jet fuel. It's right there in your face. I read several military reports. There's spec mass spectrometry. That's where they go through and they say all the elements in a thing thing. And basically it says right there, 9,300 parts per billion aluminum just in the jet fuel. I said, whoa, so that thing's loaded with aluminum. 
I wouldn't say loaded. It has aluminum in it. So I'm reading on Metabunk, the debunker website, and the guy says, well, if there's aluminum in the jet fuel, it wouldn't be burned because it's only 1,500 degrees and you got to have way more than that to burn aluminum. So what, you, what you're ending up with is there are impurities in the jet fuel. Aluminum, they put barium in the jet fuel. It's called status 450, dinonaphylene sulfonic acid, short versions DINSA, D-I-N-N-S-A. Um, it's made by Octel, O-C-T-E-L. That's where the barium comes from. DuPont started making it in 1962. They put it in the jet fuel then because they said that it would help it from uh, keep it from exploding. It's an anti-static agent. So this barium called Status, S-T-A-D-I-S, 450, is a barium fuel additive that keeps the gas from exploding if you... Yeah, so it's a it's a barium salt. I mean, d d dinonethylene sulfonic acid. So anyway, um, this they've added it since 1962. So for for all that time, we they've been spraying barium all over the planet. Um, it's not being perfectly burned up when it comes out of the engine. There is the barium they put in there to keep it from blowing up is now raining down on our heads. So now that I've disclosed that, that I dropped that smoke and gun on your audience, nobody will give a shit. Everybody will give a shit. This is great. Nobody will give a shit, Amanda. And I'm going to tell you why. Because when you become addicted to fear porn, you crave it. And once you, you, you know a thing, at least for me personally, when I know a thing, I no longer fear it. I only fear that which I don't know. Okay, so for a lot of people that are into chemtrails, they're into it because it scares them. And they don't realize that they are fear addicted. So when I actually hit them, you want to know aluminum's in there? Yes, I can prove it in a court of law. It's in the jet fuel, bam. And I know five aluminum additives where they add more aluminum to the jet fuel to make it perform better, performance enhancing. Bam. Prove it in a court of law. All right, barium, yes, yeah, status 450. Know who makes it. We can sue them. Crickets, okay. Amanda. Okay. This show's going to go down in history as Thanks. everything you need to know about chemtrails to sue in a court of law, and nobody will give a shit. Oh, Every come on, Amanda, do I have res do I have permission to respond? Come on, he's, he's uh, saying crickets. Not, not if you guys actually think that you're going to make this a whole show debunking chemtrails. With I'm not, no, I'm not debunking anything. What I'm telling uh, you I is... I just want to talk about barium. A comment. Before, Stephen, before Stephen chimes in with his information about barium, I would like to make a comment. Okay, so if this is unintentional, why is it when you and I testified for the EPA, you gave them all of your information, I gave them all of mine, why have we not heard back from these fools? Why am I blacklisted from the EPA? Why does every government, military, police, or anybody say that it's water vapor if they if there is a, even a hint that it could be a pollution problem? No NASA scientist has ever said to me, even when we were uh, interrogating him, it said to me, yes, you're right, it could be, you know, pollution from emissions. No, he <laughs> says it's water vapor, period. Well, you wouldn't say back to him? It's pretty simple. You say to them, well, go to the IPCC website, type in aviation metal particles, and on the IPCC's website, it says aluminum, barium, titanium, and other metals are pres estimated to be in the parts per billion, and that is based on a 1975 research paper where they guessed. So the reason I went to the EPA was to tell them, Jim, are you still with us? No, I think he. Bought I think he might have hit the mute button by accident. Okay, well while he's muted, go ahead and tell what you know about barium, Stephen. Okay, yeah, we he actually we lost him, but we're gonna we're trying to connect reconnect to him right now. Okay. <clears throat> okay, hopefully he'll reconnect. Yeah, the barium. The thing about the barium titanate, which is different than the other barium that they use, they are using a barium like he mentioned, but they're also using a barium titanate, which is much more exotic and much more expensive. And what's special about that material? is it has a molecular structure that has a helical shape. It looks exactly like a DNA helix. 
and they do this for a very specific reason because it acts like an antenna or a synthetic DNA antenna for the biological crap that they're doing with their harp and their, this is how they activate. The barium titanate is a key ingredient for getting the amino acids and what have you, the biological compounds to activate and produce the more gallons. But this is things that are being done in a spectrum which is on a level higher than the one we're using now. And that's why it's so difficult to talk about it because they don't teach this stuff in school. We're talking about scalar. Right. This is how they get away with HARP and all this stuff. The reason why I'm totally sold on the fact that it's a depopulation agenda is because they are not just poisoning our air, they're poisoning our food and water as well. Of if course. you look at the entire Agenda 21 scheme as it's laid out, it is to depopulate the planet. We can't just dismiss any idea that there's some nefarious, you know, entity after us, because there is. I, I love and appreciate Jim's research, and I agree with him on many points, but the intent is where we always bump heads. Jim and I have never agreed on the in intent, but I do respect and appreciate his research. It's awesome, and it's, you know, he knows what he's talking about. Um, I think we're, we're, by saying that they're not intending to do anything to harm us, that they're just being irresponsible with their emissions, that's absurd. It's been, okay, let's say, you know, 2005 is when I saw my first chemtrail. Now we're to 2016. The skies have never looked worse. They are well aware that there is a quote unquote emission problem. Okay? So, and if, if they can make contrails invisible, why aren't they doing it? Why are they intentionally blocking out the sun? If it's not intentional, why do we see them spray over the sun? And a lot of times, that's the only place they're spraying is over the sun. And also, geoengineering. Do you believe that weather warfare is not intentional? Of course it is. What about HARP? What about these death towers? What about all the metals that are going in the air? There's just too many questions. This is not fear porn. I don't fight chemtrails because I love to be afraid. I hate being scared. I hate things that I don't understand. And I do not understand what is going on in the sky and I've done everything in my power to find out what's going on with no answers. I never get an answer from anyone. I can call anyone in the government, military, politics. It doesn't matter. No one's going to give me a straight answer. And that's the way it goes. So I think, is Jim back on? What's going on? I'm back. My PC first. Oh, wow. Okay, you just missed my rant. I'm glad you missed it. Go ahead, Jim. What was the last thing I said? Because I was like on a, you know, like long rant. We, we were talking about barium, Jim, but just for the future, always reboot when your Skype does that. Okay, that's the best way to fix that. It's just reboot. Yeah, I, I, hit the, I hit the button immediately and then went and smoked real quick. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, just one second. You can pick up where you left off. You were talking about the barium. Now, what about the strontium? Is that just one of the unnamed uh, metals or whatever that's in the stuff? Yeah, it's, it's, it's in the jet fuel to begin with. You gotta understand, it's diesel fuel. So the diesel fuel comes from oil, and it's refined, and it's got all kinds of crap in. It. And if you, you look at any end of twenty one, how do you explain away fluoridating our water, poisoning our food with GMOs? Don't you see that's an agenda? Can't it's you? It's unrelated. It's all related. It's all relative. No, I want you know I'm I, and I talk to you know I'm not going to say any names, but I talk to people all the time who are like. And it's because the NWO did it. And I'm like, all right, look, man, I believe in the whole technocrat, NWO, try to take over one world government globalization. I get it. But if you're an activist and you're trying to get rid of chemtrails, bringing up the NWO or GMOs or any other topic, you will fail because you're making it too big. You're trying to prove a point that's so complex already to bring up something that allows like trolls and fools to just shoot a hole in your argument, they're not going to see the big picture. I mean, only researchers have been doing this for a long time, and we're like the one, the point one of the one percent of people on the planet. So there's not a lot of people like us. So you have to understand that when you go from the chemtrails to the GMO and the aluminum and Monsanto seed with the orgelins and the UFOs and the blue beam, they just look at you like you're effing crazy. I could give two shits. But but here's the thing. Perception is reality. 
So if, you're, if your intention is to try to mold a person who knows nothing about chemtrails, you meet him, at a, meet him at a gas station, you should do this, Amanda, because I have done this many times and talked to just Joe Redneck, you know, black old man, you know, little old lady. Just talk to them and say, you know, see if you can make them understand simply why it's a problem. And you have now opened the door for them. But to sit there and then go, because <laughs> the NWO is doing it on behalf of Monsanto. Look, I'm going to prove to you that the NWO works for Monsanto right now, just so we can do it. And then let's get back to chemtrails. During the WikiLeaks, there is a cable. It's a France cable where it says the U.S. government on behalf on the State Department is going to get a list of activists in France and distribute some pain because they oppose GMO corn. They don't want Monsanto corn in France. So the State Department is going to target them and they're harass them. Guess who's going to target them? First of all, who's going to find them? The NSA. So the NSA is going to find activists in France and harass them so that Monsanto corn gets sold in France. That is the NSA operating on behalf of American corporations, or what they like to call sometimes American interests. But that's the NWO working for Monsanto, and it's proven in a, a WikiLeaks cable right now. And it has nothing to do with chemtrails in an argument or a court of law or trying to convince somebody. Does that make sense? We shouldn't have to convince anybody. They should just look up at the sky and be like, oh, my God. You know, this is ridiculous that we have to convince anybody. We haven't even had a sky here for like four days. It's just been chem filth, layers of it, the heart waves going from the death power frequencies, pumping through the chemicals, and God knows what is being sprayed in the atmosphere. I cannot, as a normal, you know, as a rational human, I cannot look at the sky and watch the airplanes emit their garbage for miles and miles stretching across the sky and think it's accidental. Especially when I see them targeting the sun on a daily basis in the morning and at night. I haven't seen the sun for almost a week now. It's pathetic. And and you want me to you want me to believe that it's unintentional. You gotta convince me better than that, Jim. Okay, so I will. Um right now the the EPA or let's put it this way, carbon taxes. So carbon taxes are all the rave. The EPA hearing we went to was really all about carbon taxes. Um, but the, here's, the, here's the thing. Here's the rub. The reason I went there is because they said, do you believe that aircraft emissions endanger public health? And if so, why? So for me, what I said was I don't like clouds. And here's why. You know, could have blocked out telescopes. They're full with acid rain. They got metal particles like barium and aluminum in it. I don't like it. You guys need to regulate clouds, and you need to go up there and test what's in them. That's why I went to the EPA. Are they going to listen? No. So far, no. This is the last chance we have. Two weeks ago, the EPA did decide, meaning ruled in favor of the plaintiffs, us, the people who showed up, that they are going to write regulations. Last two weeks ago, they decided you know, they are going to write regulations. So here's the thing right now before they're written is the only opportunity probably for 10 15 20 years that this community will get to say we don't like metal particles coming out of planes and we know they're there and we want you to regulate that not co2 and nitrous oxide and all this crap we care about metal coming out of planes because it causes alzheimer's and all these other problems so the problem is that people are so demoralized that they don't believe they should even try. I mean, you know, if if all the big names in the chemtrail industry got together and said, let's go to the EPA right now and demand that they do something about this problem. Right now they're writing the regulations. We want it on this. And if they don't listen, then we got to do the same thing that the Sierra Club and all the groups that made that thing happen. We need to sue the EPA. Right. And then guess what? We'll have our day in court. Right. We need to sue them already. I have a paper trail meeting for five years. 
And also, I spoke with the organizer of the previous EPA hearing. She did tell me that they're going to have another hearing. I am attending that. And trust me, I'm not going to be nice like I was the first time. This is ridiculous. I haven't even received so much as a email. Yeah, me, me. Message. Anything saying thank you for attending. We, were, you know, we received your complaint. Anything. They have me blacklisted, folks. It means when I call the EPA, any number I call, my phone number pops up and they do not answer. It doesn't matter what time of day. And, and if I call from someone else's phone, as soon as they hear it's my voice, they put me on hold or just hang up on me. So, so the, the, the doctor we call, Dr. Hal Thorey, right. um, he actually is working on the team that's testing the JPA doped with sulfur, the geoengineered jet fuel right now. So those guys at the EPA, they knew about that. They know all about the fact that chemtrails right now, contrails, persistent contrails, cirrus clouds, they trap heat. And these guys want to put more sulfur in them, making them more acid rain clouds. They're, well, they're serious, they're ice, but they want to pump more sulfur into them to make them cool the plant instead of heating it so they can make money off of it. Right now, what they're doing is they're just as cheaply as they can get you from point A to point B, they make money. The biggest expense in the airline industry is gas. So at the end of the day, just like fracking, just like GMOs, just like vaccines, just like any other category you want to pick, they're going to do whatever they can for their investors to make money, and they do not give one crap about the environment or your health until you get them in court, like Aaron Brockovich. So why would the airline industry be any different? They got all the money in the world coming in from people flying to and fro. They don't give a damn about the environment because there are no regulations on them at all right now. When it comes to you know pollution, yeah, they got the Clean Air Act and they've got a couple things, but really they've never even been tested, so none of it matters. Clean Air Act, there are no airplanes in it. Airplane emissions are not in the Clean Air Act. Well, of course, according to this lawsuit, they are now. <laughs> so they did expand the scope of the Clean Air Act to include aviation, you know, CO2. So if you can put CO2 and make it into a court of law or make it to their regulations over CO2 with the Clean Air Act, barium and aluminum is exactly the same law go look up how they did it and use the same law and so on. And we can do this. It's just people have to believe that you can actually do something about it. If you believe it's a secret government program, there's nothing you can do about a secret government program. Barack Obama cannot do anything about a secret government program. He don't know about it. Yes, we do know about it and we are exposing it. We're trying to expose people behind it. Um, obviously there's a huge cover up these clandestine geoengineering projects. What do you think about those? Those are obviously intentional, Jim. So the dude, the dude Chuck Long came from, forward from CRES to say that planes are accidentally geoengineering. And basically says that they're creating ice haze worldwide. And that's the problem. So, um, you know, the, whether it's accidental or not, plane, we, we now have a scientist on record say that planes are geoengineering. That's the win of this. Whether it's intentional or unintentional doesn't really matter at this point. The reason why? Geoengineering SRM is illegal. There's a government moratorium on it. The World Health Organization said, or World, World Meteorological Organization said, no geoengineering. We don't know enough info. Uh, Convention for Biological Diversity said, no geoengineering, not enough info. The All the countries but the United States signed a ban themselves on geoengineering. So now that we know that we've known it's geoengineering, but now that we have a scientist also saying it's accidental geoengineering, is it accidentally illegal to go and shoot somebody? It is. So geoengineering is illegal. They are doing it. Aluminum barium is in there. What else does anybody want to know? And, and by the way, everything I'm telling you, I believe, is a, just as a result of them 
you know, trying to fly as cheaply as possible and F the environment. They don't care about it till they're sued. It's just like any heartless corporation. Corporations have no soul. There's a documentary on it. It's great. <laughs> so any corporation like an airline industry does not care about the environment until forced. One of your one of your friends is calling Amanda. I just verify the number. But yeah, there's yeah. We, we don't take guest callers on these shows. Okay, but it's uh, I'm you know, somebody you had from one of your last shows. Okay. I mean, they chime in. I don't have a problem. It's somebody we know. Yeah, okay. I'll, I mean, I hope a troll calls because I love <laughs> This is a troll-free zone. I despise the shows that are not allowed on this show. Okay, Aww. so who called in? I don't like dead air. This is wasting time. No, I'm sorry. It was I got to unmute first to answer your question. It was a 626, uh, I'm sorry, 206, number 878. Right, Stephen, that's not helping me at all. I don't know who the caller is. Can we just go on with the show? And, and if you yeah, yeah, go ahead. It's just that this was somebody was on your last show. I just didn't get their name apparently, but they're okay. on your they're on your good caller list. Okay, cool. I mean, yeah, if anybody wants to chime in, that's on the good caller list. They can. All right, awesome. So we have twenty minutes left, and I do want to go over Climate Viewer, but I want to say something about Jim Lee. I had the honor of meeting this man at the EPA hearing. What a genuine guy. I mean, a, a totally nice guy, open, honest. I love your research, Jim. I mean, even though we don't see eye to eye on the intent, a, my research can't even hold court in yours, but I think I have a different perspective as to how I'm going to go about this. I, if the EPA does have another hearing, you know, obviously we're going there and we're going to shred them. I did love what you said about how if all the big names are the big players in the chemtrail community banded together, we could all go and sue the hell out of these freaks. I mean, I myself, I can just sue them right now myself. And you guys would all support me because I've been ranting and raving about this. I have a paper trail a mile long. You know, we actually have to do something because I am afraid, and this is not fear porn, Jim, I'm afraid that we're not going to survive this if we don't stop these freaks. That's my honest opinion. We have to make changes now, or we're going to be polluted to death. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy, is the discussion of, um, I think I'm getting feedback from you, Amanda. It's like your speakers are too loud. Um, what, what offends me is, like, the whole discussion of climate change and CO2, and it's all focused on that. Um, and, and nobody wants to take care of the climate change. I can see in front of me, over my head, you know, I had a great sunny day, planes came and farted all over the sky, now the sun's gone. I mean, it's unbelievable. No, we don't see eye Hi there, this is Allie Larkin. Welcome, Allie. Hello. Allie, and, uh, I have a question and <laughs> about Jeff Julie Mission. Allie, can you please turn down the radio if you have it behind you? I just turned uh, on my computer, I just put it on mute. Thank you. Go ahead. Oh, am I on now? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, oh. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> uh, hi there. Hi, Amanda. Happy birthday. Thank you. And uh, my question is, uh, as somebody who is near the SeaTac International Airport and uh, very involved in uh, them, uh, putting in a third runway and all of that, uh, been working with Port of Seattle and others. In fact, I just dropped out of a class la action lawsuit on the noise that it's causing. But the other problem that I've been having is since that third runway opened, I've been having a tremendous amount of what I've been calling the black dust falling on my deck and my deck furniture. Well, my question is, after uh, listening to your uh, guest talk about uh, these things being in the jet fuel, um, I have swept up this black dust, and uh, I have it in a little jar, and I did take it to one of those meetings, and when I asked the Port of Seattle, after I asked people if they had the black dust on their yard, and a lot of them in the audience raised their hand, uh, they said, no, but we could call a number and they could probably tell you. Well, this girl came running up saying, oh, it's one of the most worst carcinogens known to man. Well, anyway, I have this little glass vial of jet fuel emission. So I'm wondering if I took that to a lab, if um, it could be tested to show if it contains those things. Would it be worth doing that? 
I'd have to check out the price because as a former water con commissioner, I know these uh, tests can be very expensive, and uh, I'm not sure I could afford it if it were too expensive, but uh, would that be worth testing, do you think? I'm afraid we, Jim, seems to have dropped off just now. I'm going to try to reconnect to him. Uh, but Amanda, did you want to say something until I am successful? I have a comment. Oh, there he is. He's back. Great. That was a great question, Alex. It was a great question. I was, like, so excited that I punched my keyboard and kicked myself out of the chat. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that is carbon black soot. That is soot emission. And when you take that, you're going to find that it is... The, major the majority of it is going to be carbon, it's going to be black soot, and it's going to have metal particles in it, and it's going to have a ton of sulfur in it. That's going to be the majority of it. And guess what? That black soot is dangerous. Um, it's kind well, of like Yes, and it goes on 24-7 all over the planet, and it is not regulated by uh, the EPA or exactly. uh, the FAA or anybody. Exactly. So they won't. That's one of the things I said at the EPA hearing is that Here's the here's the smoking gun, you know, everybody wants to know what's creating all the clouds coming from the planes. It's soot. The US military calls it carbon black aerosol or carbon black dust, but this black soot is the burnt remnants of jet fuel. And that stuff is bad for you. So like just like with uh they had black lung back in the day. You ever heard of that? Oh, yeah, I've heard of that, and you should see the cancer reports around the people that live right under the airport, uh, yeah. under the runways, and right around the airport. Yeah, they so have soaring cancer rates. So here's their, here's their solution. This is, this is the real geoengineering program with jet fuel. And I read it in a paper. I can send it. It's on climateviewer.com slash chemtrails. They want to use biofuels, ultra-low sulfur jet fuel, on takeoff to create less soot, so that people don't die around airports, and then when they get to altitude, switch to a different fuel that is loaded with sulfur, and they call it doped with sulfur. And the reason why is because A, geoengineering is expensive, B, we've already got planes flying everywhere. C, sulfur is what comes out of volcanoes, that's what's gonna cool the planet. So they are actively messing with what's in that jet tank to turn those contrail frowns upside down to make those clouds that heat the planet currently because they're loaded with black soot. Black soot, uh, it, it captures heat and it traps it. Um, there was a guy named William Gray. He had a paper in 1975 saying that he could steer hurricanes with carbon black soot. Dr. Masha Alamaro from MIT at the Department of Homeland Security meeting on steering hurricanes said, I can steer hurricanes with carbon black soot. The stuff in your bottle is carbon black soot. So basically, like, that's, that's a big problem right now because these diesel fuel engines, they do have a lot of particulate emissions. The particulate emissions are hurting people's health, loaded with aluminum, barium, sulfur, and soot, and they're bad for you. So, like, for me, this isn't even a conspiracy. This is a planes doing business, crapping all over the environment, no regulations to stop them, and the only thing they're worried about is their bottom line to the investors. And in your case, your yard's black. So you get to see it right up and close. But yeah, definitely get that sample and put it on the internet. <laughs> Send it to me, jim at climateviewer.com. I want to see that. Oh, you mean if I have it tested? Yes, please. Yeah, well, I, I've been thinking about it, but like I say, the expense has kind of put me off. And uh, I thought the law firm that I was involved in the class action suit, they came here and took samples and, um, well, after thousands of hours and hundreds of thousands of dollars and uh, all these years later, eight years later, uh, they, they've decided to uh, not go forward with it because you can't fight the quasi-government of the Port of Seattle. That's right. And, and Alzheimer's, autism, and respiratory illness, big time around you know airports like you're dealing with. I don't know if you've ever experienced a fuel dump. Oh, I've seen them. Where you, they, they dump the gasoline on when they're trying to land and oh. it just... I, I watched the airports on the, for the third and second runway uh, on the south end of it, whether they're, they're coming in or they're going out, depending on the weather. So I, I've seen them dump fuel. I've seen them go out over Puget Sound and dump fuel. Okay, so are you close enough to breathe that? Because I want to let you know that that fuel contains five separate cancer-causing chemicals. 
And didn't but, I tell you I'm sweeping it up from my yeah, white deck? So, so whenever they're dumping that fuel, deck and my railings. Yeah, when they're dumping that fuel, that fuel is highly toxic. It is mm -hmm. supposed to be dumped. They have regulations about altitude when they dump it because basically it was. I'm going to make some numbers up: four thousand feet minimum. You know, because they thought it would evaporate before it hit the ground. But then when they switched to that diesel fuel, the JPA, the Jet A, um, diesel fuel, jet fuel. Um, that it didn't evaporate. So they had to raise the limit on the minimum altitude you could dump at because basically this stuff was hitting the ground in liquid form and it's highly toxic. Yeah, we, we, we know that. And uh, let me tell you, I, I used to enjoy sitting out on my deck, but I, I don't anymore since this runway was, it, it's about a block and a half away from me. I mean, the planes already have their landing gear down. Yeah. So, so, like I said earlier, 1972, the New Jersey and Illinois were suing over what you're talking about, and they called it smoke pollution of the sky, and the term of the day was called black belch. So basically, like on takeoff, you know, these, these planes were just dumping massive amounts of soot everywhere, so much that they had a term called black belch for it. Well, you apparently have experienced black belch in your yard. Yeah, well, the gal who come, came running up to me at that hearing uh, with the Port of Seattle uh, is the author of a book called Over My Head, Debbie Wagner. Uh, it's an activist group fights an airport expansion, a personal story of community grassroots toxic emissions and far too many cancer deaths. But this turned into being an international study. It's an excellent book, Over My Head, by Debbie D B or D E B I Wagner. Very cool. I'll check that out. Yeah, it's not a well-published book, but it can be found because it does have an ISP, and you may have to order it. It's just a small book, but boy, did she do her research on an international basis with airports all over the world. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so I know a guy, his name's Michael Saraceno, and he's been really studying the autism, Alzheimer's around airports. Um, if you check him out on Facebook, I'm sure he could send you some really good stuff. He also was with us at the EPA hearing. Yeah, well, you know, and as a... And also, um, I've been an, uh, primarily a, a nature outdoor photographer since 1968, and I have uh, been a ocean sailor, uh, studying the weather, studying the clouds, and I go back in my photography and I see when all of the clouds, or all those lines in the sky, when it had all started changing, and I didn't even know what it was till I was, I was told about it, and I see the total difference between jet fuel emission and aerosol spraying. Well, at the end of the day, they are the same thing. An aerosol is any particle suspended in the gas, and, and those aerosols are soot, sulfuric acid, and metal, the aluminum and barium everybody's looking for. So, well, yes, but excuse me, I know the flights of the commercial airplanes very well, and the flights that these other trails that I'm seeing are not in the regular flight patterns. You know, and I, that's the most common thing said to me, and here's the thing, like, I'm a mapping guy. I made this thing called Climate Viewer 3D. So I like map everything in the world on a 3D globe. I got NSA facilities, nuclear sites, every single ionospheric heater. So like I'm a mapper. And like, so when I got this augmented reality thing and started tracking all the planes, you know, try to see so what there's everybody There's websites to do that. Yeah. So, I mean, literally there has not been a flight that was pounding smoke over my house that I could not find out who it was. I like and I can assure you that for me personally, they were all, you know, like Southwest Airlines, Delta Airlines. Okay, um, point. Allie just pointed out something awesome that I should have picked up on. The fact that we have caught so many aircraft, I have personally caught them and videotaped them, making U-turns in the sky, doing zigzag patterns and all this stuff. That is not a commercial aircraft that's just emitting a JP-8. Why are they going in a U-turn? I have the footage. I'll show it to you, Jim. Okay, so here's where I like to draw the line. There's always going to be 5% of anything. That, that's the military, and there's no way to prove what the heck they're up to. Um, a good example, the E3 AWACS will fly in circles. 
I mean, it's all it does. It flies in circles. Once it gets to where it's going, it flies in circles. And then it drives off to the next spot, and then it flies in circles. So when you're talking about military planes, yeah, they're not going to be on any tracker that you guys can access. Well, excuse me, but I also used to live on Ketron Island, just south of here, which is right across from McCord Air Force Base, now referred to as the JBLM. So I have seen the planes flying in and out of McCord Air Force Base, and I'm very aware, uh, with all of my trips to Olympia and back and forth, the presence that they also have here of the military. And the military does not fly in the same flight patterns that I'm seeing these other trails in. Okay, so then in your scenario, we're talking about a third party that's a corporate entity that is paying for geoengineering out of a secret plane. Me personally, I've never seen that. The military, I know for a fact that they are engaged in weather warfare studies, that they say they're going to do weather warfare using carbon black dust. Um, I have a report that I got off of archive.org that came from the U.S. Army's website where they said that they were going to create and suppress contrails using carbon black dust. So basically, in 1996, they said that they were using carbon black dust to steer weather, make weather, block out um, the sun. So all of this we know, and that's military, but it works. Well, right? yes, really? yes, and the military says that electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic radiation and microwave frequencies don't harm us, so the Navy is doing their electromagnetic training on our Olympic Peninsula. Yeah, I know, and I, I was protesting against... Huge that. noises, uh, Atlanta putting Freeland. a harm on everyone. I don't know if you know Alana Freeland, but she also was raising the... She's a very good about, friend of mine. Yeah, she's, she's really good people. Um, but the military readily recognizes that directed energy weapons are the weapon of the future. They even have a paper called Operational Weather Control in 2030, where they say they're going to make chemtrails. They're going to make cirrus clouds to block out lasers in space and directed energy weapons in space. So if you're wondering why the military would want to make clouds, they say in their own literature for nighttime operations, so to make it darker, they use their night vision, enemies can't see a thing, and to defeat satellite spy optics and directed energy weapons in space. The military says it in their own literature. We're going to make clouds to block lasers. <laughs> Well, um, if you believe the military and everything they say, fine. I, 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 I really don't because I know about winning the hearts and minds with perception management and propaganda. And I also understand that DARPA created this Internet that we're beloved of and on right now. So, you know, it can go both ways. You know, they invented this as a control mechanism to put propaganda into the houses of Asians. And look at us now. So... All right, guys, we have, we have three minutes left. We have Great call. Listen. I want to give, I want to thank you, Jim, so much for coming on and sharing your research. I could actually talk to you for about five more hours about this, and I still wouldn't be satisfied. I mean, you're just a, a wealth of information. Why don't you go ahead and plug your websites and uh, where we can find you? Well, I appreciate you having me, Amanda. And again, happy birthday. You sound like you're having a good one. <laughs> um, once more, um, I'm Jim from climateviewer.com, uh, climateviewer.com and .org. On do my climateviewer.com is my blog, Climate Viewer News. It's where I write articles and research papers. I have some pretty lengthy ones on things like HARP, geoengineering, uh, surveillance in the technocratic info war state, um, nuclear warheads, warfare, and uh, power plants, stuff like that. And then on climateviewer.org, I create apps. Um, so I, I made a 3D globe and a mobile map for those who can't run the 3D globe where you can see real-time satellites, weather, radar, you know, uh, buoys, earthquakes, fire, nuclear, <laughs> you know, like everything you could ever imagine is in one place on there. So that for me personally, I can go there and say, what happened today? Oh, God, there's a flood next to a nuclear plant. I should go look into this. This could get interesting. Um, and that's what I do. So, climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org. And Amanda, keep up the good fight. But always ask yourself, is what I'm doing today going to stop chemtrails? Because we've all come a long way and we've all talked a lot of junk. But me personally, everything I do, from the wording I choose to how I deliver a message, is because I want 
the clouds, the chemtrails, the contrails, the persistent contrails, aviation-induced cloudiness, whatever the F you want to call it. I want them gone. And that's what we have in common. Thank you so much, Tim. That's Tim Lee. All right, Ali Larkin, one of my personal heroes. I love it when you talk. You know what you're talking about. I mean, you have um, passion. You have the experience behind what you say. Why don't you go ahead and tell everybody where we can find you? Well, I kind of fly under the radar because um, uh, I have my I stay away from uh, those iPhones, those dumb phones, and uh, Wi-Fi and all of that. Uh, that uh, um, the best way to find me is my uh, website that, uh, with the NGO that I have is Washington Action for Safe Water, or it's WASW.org, and uh, also uh, I, I go forward with uh, FluoridaAlert.org. Thank you. So but as far as me personally, I'm just on Facebook, and I'm soon to be off of that because uh, this Saturday it's coming to light, and um, I will soon be... Uh, um, now on my new course, after 11 years of my career, my public, uh, my volunteer work as a beach naturalist for the aquarium, learning all about the marine animals and the water and how it's impacting them, to a public service as a water commissioner, uh, finding out I was just about the only elected official I knew, that all those things have come to a close. I just set a new course, next waypoint going to be announced on this Saturday. We're going forward with it, and it will be an option to encrypted website with places to re with uh, ways to replace Tracebook and a whole bunch of other stuff. That's awesome. So awesome. And the designer of it is David Spring, who wrote the book Free Yourself from Microsoft and the NSA. Absolutely. Thank you so much, guys. All right, that wraps it up for the first hour. Coming up, we have Chris Dorsey and Glenn Sutton. And Steve, you can go ahead and take it away. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Amanda. Again, happy birthday. I hope everybody's enjoying your show. I, oh, gosh. Uh, caller 804, I'm going to bring you in, but I'm going to ask you to hold on. Caller 804, could you please hold on, please? We're taking a break. Thing. Yeah, thank you. Okay, everybody, I want to remind everybody then, this is TruthCat Radio, www.truthcat.com. You're listening to the Madison Star Moon Show. And this is a special show because it is Amanda... Danielle's birthday, and on top of that is her fourth show with Truth Cat Radio, and not only that, it is also the 34th show to be broadcast by Truth Cat Radio. So we're very happy tonight. This is uh, somewhat of a milestone for all of us, and we're very excited to have Amanda, Amanda aka Madison Starman, with us to participate in this wonderful news. And I like to think that everything that our previous guests uh, talked about, the activism and what we can do, that's exactly what we're doing right now. And the more I listen to these guys, the more I realize that we are doing exactly what we should be doing. So I'm, I'm very pleased to be on that path. I want to remind everybody that several things. First of all, we are listener supported. If you can, please go to our Support Us button on our main page. It'll be between the chat button and the Truth Cat store button, which is not complete yet. Uh, but there are instructions on how you can help us with PayPal or credit card or other means that you have at to your disposal. Again, the chat room is available and open and functional right now. Please register a name to the chat. There are no anonymous chat users. And join us, and that way you can send a question in through chat to the, the host or the guest and we also want to advise everybody that we do need as much support as possible with promoting us on the internet with the alternative media Facebook of course is very important we need everybody to like the various pages for the host to help us share the the advertisements of the various shows to groups that you belong to and on your own personal web page this is very important to us also liking these various ads as well as the various pages and pages associated with the various hosts. Very, very important. We need this for you to help us grow. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in a caller again in 804. Just bear with me, okay? Okay. All right, thank you. <coughs> again, this is Amanda's 40th birthday show, and we are going to continue with some very special guests in the next half of the show. I also want to tell everybody that tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Eastern, a brand new show uh, starring Graham Sutherland, who has a very, very popular group on Facebook, 
uh, he is going to have his new show, which is called Delete the Beast. We're very much looking forward to that. He's actually going to be moving to Thursday almost immediately after his Wednesday show to replace Miguel Puerta's slot, who's having issues with his internet. Uh, Daryl Nichols, who's normally on Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern, is going to be moving into the Tuesday slot at 8 p.m. Eastern. And Jay Parker and his show Matrix Warriors, which is now on Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, is going to move into the Thursday primetime slot at 8 to 10 Eastern, immediately before the Stephen D. Kelly show. The <laughs> Power of Consciousness with Rodrigo Soto will continue at 8 p.m. Eastern Friday. And we also have, again... The center path with Jay Parker is going to be at 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. And we have a new show that will be starting very soon with Janice Barcelo that we're looking forward to, and we're going to put her in a prime time slot. And we have other hosts that we're looking to bring into the Truth Cat Network. If you have anything that you would like to add to this network by way of either of being a host, if you think you have what it takes, or if you would like to contribute either with the production the promotion, the creative advertising, music skills, music production, video production, web page building skills, all of this is very useful and we can use volunteers in almost any area that might be associated with running a radio network. So this is all very important and it is now 8.05, my time here on the West Coast and we are ready to continue with the second half of Madison Star Moon with Amanda Danielle. Happy birthday one more time. Go for it, Amanda. Thank you so much, Stephen. All right, this next hour we have Chris Dorsey and Glenn Sutton. Are you guys on the line? Uh, yeah, yeah. Whoa. It's a little bit of a bad connection there. Let's start with you, Chris. Let me let me hear you. We'll do a little sound check. Greetings. Greetings. Good. All right, what about you, Glenn? Happy birthday, Maddie. Oh, perfect. Okay, so these are two of my favorite guys. Anybody that knows me personally knows that these are my friends, and these are people that I follow and I believe in. Uh, we also protested the streets of Richmond against chemtrails and 9-11 and the federal government. That's what it was. You guys were uh, trying to stop the Fed um, and, and expose the Fed. All right, let's start with Chris Dorsey. You recently truth-bombed. Who was it? Um, hold on a second. I'm going to get it right. No, I can't get it right. What was the television station you were on? Press TV. Uh, I was on, yeah, Press TV. Uh, yeah, I go on uh, Press TV periodically over the years. Okay, well, this most recent appearance that you were on was amazing. The man comes out and he's talking about the horrific deaths of the Orlando shootings, this, that, and the other, and then you get on there and blow the whole lid off the whole thing. Why don't you tell us all what happened on that show? Uh, well, yeah, it was just a, an interview done on a press TV program called The Top Five. It's their daily top five uh, news stories uh, for press TV. And the, the, this was, I guess, less than 24 hours after the shooting, or the stage shooting, I should say, in Orlando, the, the Orlando PSYOP shooting which was 100% staged by the government and private security firm, G4S Security. And they, the, the, uh, um, the interviewer, who brought, I, I like and, and respect, respected, uh, uh, or respect, I should say, um, brought up a lot of the other government stage shootings, like the Virginia Tech shooting and the Columbine shooting and, and Sandy Hook, etc. And I just said that this was a government operation and that everything about what we hear in the media is a lie and that the individuals who are behind these lies do so because they're compromised in any different number of ways and that the government is at war with the people and they're a criminal entity and they need to be neutralized. Okay, now let me ask you a question because I really don't know the answer to this. Um, what is happening with the city hall, I mean, the city council meetings? Are you still able to go to those? I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay, I mean, um, because they threw you out, they were trying to frame you live on camera, and you totally caught them in the act of trying to frame you. 
and you exposed right. you exposed all of them, and then they falsely arrested you a couple of times. I've seen the footage of that. So, I mean, what's going on? Have you been back since then? Yeah, I, they, you know, one, one thing that they started to do to me was, when I, while I'm filming, obviously uh, most folks know that I do not abdicate my God-given right to, you know, bear arms, to carry a gun openly, and I do not abdicate my First Amendment right to speak in my mind and to think freely. So I, I always am, you know, whenever I'm doing my, my political actions, I'm always armed with a camera and a gun, and they don't like that. So now the police, they, they have, you know, numerous times abducted me off the street, framed me, you know, hidden me in the, in the jail system while they, you know, and then there's just judges and lawyers, everyone involved. This is not not uh, not unusual. I, I, they said I was banned, but I, I was never informed of this uh, through anything except for like a rag uh, publication called RVA News. Or actually, I don't think it was RVA News. I think it was just RVA Magazine. They are the ones that were reporting that I was banned, and this was after the the abduction that happened on live television on on PBS. Uh, what when they attempted to frame me and then get me to sign a paper, which I refused, saying I was trespassing, and, you know, it, it gets ridiculous uh, what they do, but they, they have no honor, and the only reason that, that they're doing this is because we're exposing them, and we're standing up to them, and we're saying, hey, if, if you're going to use guns to enforce your criminality, we're going to use guns and, and videos to stop you, so... You know, they, they do everything. I, I don't know whether I'm, I'm banned from, uh, I've been, I've been to City Hall since they said I was banned, so I, I, I don't, I don't know what, what would happen if I were to make some sort of appearance there. I'm yeah. not sure. They stole your gun, and they beat you up, and they stole right. your, they stole your video camera, I don't know if it was just your camera or your footage. Were you able to get everything back? Uh, I was able to get everything back eventually, but I was not able to get all the footage back. They erased, they erased the uh, uh, the footage of the cops beating me up, and then they erased video. Uh, uh, they uh, uh, deleted video uh, footage files uh, showing these events happening. Uh, now, now these are multiple different instances where these uh, Department of Homeland Security, FBI, and Richmond Police are abducting me in different places too. Um, it's pretty. It's pretty shocking, honestly, that they that they can keep doing this sort of thing over the years. Uh, when when I'm, I'm I guess I would be considered a public figure. Um, I get harassed when I'm getting ready to go on a film by uh, by the Virginia State Capitol Police. Now, this is one thing we we covered. I don't know if you want to get into the nitty gritty of of. Of the uh, of the intelligence agencies that are that are operating and spreading the misinformation, but where I go film a lot of these press TV uh, spots is at the Virginia State Capitol in the PBS studio uh, in the in the basement of the General Assembly building, and for years I've been harassed and threatened and even abducted by the Virginia State Capitol Police, and uh, they they were you know. They were very familiar to me when I started going on press TV because of the fact that the, the Virginia State Capitol Police, the Richmond Federal Reserve Bank Security Service, and the FBI were in, in many ways pulling the strings on the entire Occupy Wall Street movement. And uh, we, we, we called with this, you know, virtually immediately, and uh, it was an uphill battle from there. But we we still are forced to deal with them, you know, in order to you know get the satellite feed. Yeah. Okay. One video I do want to highlight before we move on to Glenn, because Glenn is your partner in crime, uh, and you know Glenn is there to witness most of these things that have happened to you. Did we lose Chris? I just saw something drop. Many of them. Yes. Okay. Well, anyways, um, so one of the videos that is the most amazing in your collection of amazing videos on Richmond Peace is where the Secret Service actually comes to your house to interrogate you about 
an anonymous, you know, tip they got on you about, I can't right, remember right. what it was about, but how you handled that, those secret service agents, it was epic. And then the thunder in the end is they're leaving with their tails between their legs. That is a video everyone needs to see. What is the name of that video? Um, I'm not sure what it's, it, it's actually, it's, it's been removed off my page and it's, it's, it's on a, a few other places. It's on a Vimeo, but Glenn has it on, on his mm -hmm. page. Um, I'm not sure what it's called up there. I think it's called maybe just Secret Service Encounter or Chris Dorsey Secret Service Encounter or something like that. Uh, Glenn, do you know what it's called? I, I, I don't. Um, I'll look it up. In a, I'm looking it up now. Okay. I don't remember right offhand. It was something, the Chris Dorsey Secret Service, but I'll be looking it up. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, it, they had it removed off my page because parts of it were, were featured on a, you know, on a local CBS news segment. You know, done by, by a hack reporter that we both know called Mark Holmberg. And uh, right after it was featured on, on the uh, WCBR CBS 6 News, the Secret Service filed a privacy complaint saying that I was violating the privacy of the Secret Service agents who came knocking on my door and were threatening myself and my elderly neighbors, and um, which is what happened. A anyway, uh, it, is, it, is, um, it is shocking what they'll do. And basically, yeah, they came with an anonymous letter, and it said that I was overheard threatening a bunch of public officials who I, I recognize only as, you know, lap dogs of the real bosses, and that's, that's local political acts like the so-called Sheriff C.T. Woody, the so-called Congressman Bobby Scott, you know, the so-called Mayor uh, uh, Dwight the Blight Jones. So all these secondary backbenching acts who, who are just sick of fans to the real power. But anyways, uh, I had just been threatened and attacked by C.C. Woody, the, the so-called sheriff and his goons, on camera. Uh, you can find that on Richmond Peace as well, me getting assaulted. It, and it, all this happened in front of a Channel 6 news reporter. So it's not like this is a secret when I'm revealing it on my YouTube channel. These, these things are all happening in public, in the middle of the street. You know, folks know about it. It's happening in broad daylight. So these Secret Service agents come saying that uh, they're, you know, attempting to snatch me up because they had just done that to Brandon Raub uh, a, a, about a year earlier. And they came with some nonsense saying that, you know, somebody was, you know, making an anonymous complaint. And I, I basically said, I, I think it's you who wrote the letter. You guys wrote this letter, and this was to, to come up and, and frame me, and you wrote it with all the other, you know, police agencies that you work with every day. These guys are all working together. I, that's one thing I want to I want to point out. When I'm talking to these guys and I'm telling them what's up, it's because I comprehend what the common law is. And basically, if they're going to take me down, they're going to have to take me down like within the law. You know, or, or they're going to, I should say, they're going to have to be violating the law big time every step of the way if they're going to take me down. So when they start coming in and trying to get inside my house and start asking me questions about whether I have a gun or whether I don't have a gun and, and this letter that they're, you know, allegedly anonymously showed up at their office, you know, it's all BS. And that's one thing that everyone needs to remember. Whenever you're talking to any sort of government agent at this sort of level, everything that they're saying is the opposite of what they're really doing, why they're really there, what they really know. And um, basically, yeah, the Secret Service is a, is a criminal operation, just like every other aspect of the United States government. It's under the auspices now of the Department of Homeland Security, and the DHS, man, it's, that's one of the most criminal operations in the history of mankind. But, uh, you know, that's just one of the elements of the shadow government that we can get into. And that's why the Secret Service 
comes after us like that is because, you know, they. What else? Who else are they going to go after? I mean, ISIS. They created ISIS. Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda. You know, that's 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 straight out of Tel Aviv, Israel. So, so who are they? Who is their real challenge? Who are they? And what is their motivation? And why are they framing? You know, me. I mean, I'm not a rich man. I'm not a, you know, I'm not, I'm not famous. Well, I, you know, what, what is it about what I'm doing? You are and, and basically, it's just, we're exposing exactly what they're doing. Sorry. You ran for sheriff. You're an influential public figure. You are famous in your own right. Um, you have a huge following. And you are a threat to the establishment. Your presence at those city council meetings alone was a threat to them because you are exposing what they were doing. And the fact that they w they didn't even listen to you. They wouldn't even allow you to sit certain places, and they wanted to micromanage everything. They didn't want you there. They didn't want you there because you're free press. You know what I'm saying? They want their mainstream media puppets to say what they want them to say, and that's not you, so therefore you're a threat. All right, I want to go on to Glenn because, you know, Glenn is with you on a lot of these missions that you guys are going on. I don't know what to call it. It's not a mission. You're just going there as a, what would you say? What would you call it, Glenn? Um, we, 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 we just show up. We got feedback here. Uh, we just show up, and I mean, my, I'm press, so I walk in as press, and Chris walks in as press, and we just do it to get back to what he was, what you were talking about. The name of that video is Chris Dorsey's Secret Service Encounter on my page, <clears throat> and because uh, they took it down on his page and some other ones, but I never got any notice, so it's up and. If they want it down, they got to send me legal notice and do it the correct way, not just say you got to take it down. Uh, you know, I don't play that game. Right. <clears throat> but Glenn, Glenn was actually my photographer at the EPA hearing. Um, we went to Washington, D.C. together, and he documented the entire event. Um, how do you feel it went, the EPA hearing? I think, I think it went pretty good. I mean, um, the, the event went like the event went. I mean, there was a lot of stage stuff there, and they had several paid people that had to be there, but I I like the the uh, Jim Lee and you know, the other ones that were there. You, I mean, and, you know, I was there on and C-SPAN. That was the only other media outlet there was C-SPAN, which that was really kind of ironic and kind of, you know, for something that's supposed to be a worldwide event, they only have C-SPAN. So that was kind of like... Mm -hmm. and, and then we got when we were walking around the district of criminals and handing you were handing out flyers. Uh, I, I really enjoyed all that. That yeah, was awesome. It was great to see everybody that came together for that. And I mean, I'm, if we have uh, another opportunity, I expect you to come with me, Glenn, because you couldn't come to Vancouver. But no, we are we're not letting the EPA just get away with it. You know what I'm saying? We came there and we told our stories. We have our evidence. We have our paper trails. It, you know, investigate what we're talking about. That's it. They, they, there's no investigation. And Jim Lee was saying that they're they're going to begin to regulate this stuff when the sky is shredded. I mean, I know we can harp about the chemtrails till the cows come home, but I mean, we have to because nothing's changing. We have to do something. All right, Glenn, what have you been up to? I haven't been keeping up too much with like everybody. What what is your main source of activism right now? Um, right now, my main source would be uh, Hidden Valley Condominium, so uh, that's a big one on my radar. Uh, it has an engineer report that says that the building should be condemned. A three-story wall on this building fell completely off the building. They stuck it back up there and basically super glued it onto the building and go, in no way did it harm or affect the integrity of this building. There's mold, there's slime. Uh, it's had two or three fires. People have died in this building, and and the county up there is covering it up. The I don't know why the engineers didn't. With the engineer report, why the engineers didn't just condemn the building and get it tore down? And uh, the the advocate that I'm representing has been fighting for 17 years against these people for this building and getting nowhere. And and they turn a blind eye and they. have threatened her, fa uh, her family and friends, and I mean, it's a real mess up there, and and then I also, I'm doing my show with Chris and following Chris around, and 
Uh, we uh, covered the uh, Trump PSYOP. That was crazy in itself. Let me hear about the PSYOP. Oh, you, you didn't see all that? No. Uh, did you see it on the news, what they said on the news about it? They had like a... The, they had like a small riot, and then the rioters took to the street, which was all police-led. Uh, Chris and I covered this stuff, but we, I, I got say I'm not allowed. I am proud to say I am banned from the Richmond Coliseum for life because I I walked up there as press. We have it on film, and they well, you can't film here. I'm on Infowars in the background of Infowars. And they're chasing me around and telling me I can't film, but InfoWars is standing right there filming, and they go, it's illegal. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, InfoWars is standing right there, and all I'm doing is the same thing. And I'm pressed, and they go, well, we told you to stop filming. I said, I understand what you told me, but I'm not going to comply because it's illegal. I'm allowed to film outside. They go, you got to get off the property. And I was trying to con talk to the chief, the deputy chief of police, I've got him on film and 30 officers surround me and chase me off the property. And it's like, it was, it was nuts. Wow. So you <clears throat> are both getting pretty much chased away from anywhere you go. That's a clear sign that you're on the right path, you know? Oh, yeah. Do you guys get trolled and chilled? Pardon? Um, Do you guys get trolled? Oh, uh, trolled? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Um, we, we do, and, and definitely, uh, honestly, I think a, a lot of, I'll speak for myself, and I, I think I see it with, with a little bit with Glenn, too. We mostly get uh, law, so-called law enforcement. Government agents are, are usually the ones that attempt to shill or, or come after us uh, and, and threaten us. And, and, yeah, we definitely... We definitely dealt with the Secret Service at the Richmond Coliseum as as well, and mm -hmm. uh, it was is an absolute joke with with their with their hypocrisy, uh, saying they stand up against the police state, but the Donald Trump uh, rally and and his whole psyop this summer has been not, been about nothing but enforcing the police state, and uh, yeah. Anyway, that's that's all I got to say about that one. Oh, we all, we, we've also been attacked in the press hit by DHS. So it's, you know, yeah, we get, the trolls we get out there in the field are mainly government operatives, uh, DHS, the feds, I mean, you name it, uh, the, the, the bike narcs. I mean, oh, yeah, that's another aspect that maybe, maybe we want to touch on about how, how we've named these like George Soros, Black Lives Matter operators, and then when we when we talk about issues like the Tea Party or Black Lives Matter, it, it's part of a larger operation, and it's funded by you know the Rockefeller Family Fund, the Tide Foundation, George Soros, very much in particular with Black Lives Matter, and and they're using the same actors, military mm -hmm. intelligence operators. Undercover police officers in, in Occupy for the Bernie Sanders campaign and the Black Lives Matter movement. It's the same people, and we dot them what their names are, and we, we put them up on video saying, hey, these guys are federal agents. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what we do. Yeah. Chris, I've learned so much from you with the tactics that you use and also the law. You teach people what the constitutional law states. And you actually question these police officers, and none of them know what it is. It's funny, you can ask yeah. specific things in the Constitution, and they give you the deer in the headlights look like you're the one that's crazy. Most of them really seem dumb. I mean, I'm not, I'm not talking about <laughs> 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 Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> and, and you know what, I'm going to think about one of your videos, where the man, well, they falsely arrested you, and they have you in the hallway, and the man is just like groping on your arm and he won't let it go no matter what. You're not even resisting. You're literally just standing there saying, Un stop manhandling me. Stop molesting me. And this man, did, did you ever, were you ever able to like get any whatever from that? Uh, I, I had a face-to-face -face conversation with him afterwards because, you know, that, 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 that's a good segue in because 
you know, government is a two-dimensional creation of man. And God creates man, and man creates government. And there's absolutely no way that, that it is legitimate for the government to be treating the people like, like they are. You know, chemical warfare through, uh, you know, chemtrailing, you know, biological warfare through, you know, SARS, monkeypox, you know, you know, with the one going Zika. Anyways, so, so when we know that, that government is a two-dimensional creation of man, then we just go forward and we say, look, you can't do, tell me or say to me anything. And the only way you're going to enforce your, you know, what you, what you want is through superior force. You're going to have to force me to do so using deadly force, which basically they're committing treason when they're doing that. So when this guy's manhandling me, and there's like a picture of this particular officer, um, and uh, he, he is... Like when they're when they're carrying me off, there's like a homosexual element about it too. The guy's like staring at my crotch. You know, that's these cops they they seem to be like I don't know, they seem to be like satanic, they seem to be kinda of dumb, they seem to be like, you know, have a have a like a higher percentage of like being rapists than the average American. And they seem to have a higher percentage of being child molesters than the average American. And and so they seem to be like the worst and most aggressive, violent and dumb individuals. And uh no, nothing ever came of that, but I'm working on a on a uh, um uh, common law lawsuit, and basically, uh, we're going to press charges against all these people. We did, I did at the time. You know, I, I, it was caught on every different camera from every different angle. They attempted to frame me, and I've taken out lawful arrest warrants, and they just ignore them. Like, the law doesn't apply. Yeah, like, good. it's okay to abduct me and to frame me and to have dozens of the top lawyers and and cops and every federal agency and state agency involved and they, they just pretend like it didn't happen right but yeah i, I don't know I, I, it, there's not i mean there's not very many people that that, that happens to but it it happens to me it, it happens to other people i see you know, we've been involved in this for a while. It's very dangerous to be involved in, in this sort of activity because uh, they will they'll try to do anything to anybody, and they, and they think that they can get away with it. And, you know, what we're saying is that under the law, all of these tools, all of these chemical weapons, all of these secret bases, all of this military hardware, it belongs to the people. And that we're, we're not going to say, oh, we're going to take one side or the other or the third or the fourth side in a, in, in a, a rigged election. We're saying we're requiring the government, they, they need to start handing this stuff over. We don't need to be like, you know, theorizing about what chemical warfare operation the government is carrying out against the people. We need everything that is top secret in the Pentagon to be disseminated, and it needs to be done lawfully through the militia. And uh, that's what we're forwarding right now. Um, you know, we said, we, I, I sent you a couple things about the aspects of the shadow government and how they're operating, but, I mean, basically that's all we've been doing is confronting them, confronting their their levers of power and doing so in in as you know, in as close proximity to the head of the beast as we can find. I'm so proud of you. And uh, yeah that's that'll that'll that's dangerous. Right, it's dangerous and you're taking a lot of risk upon yourself just to get this information out. You guys are true investigators and warriors. I mean, I've, I've followed your work for years. And, um, okay, so what's next on the agenda? What are y'all going to work on next? Um, well, go ahead, Glenn. I'm sorry. Well, on my end, fixing my computer and getting my equipment to run correctly because they've been messing with everything in the house. And 
I mean, I'm almost basically posting stuff telepathically. It's that bad. I've got my computers held together with scotch tape, no lie. And I can't hardly do anything, but, what I, you know, I'm doing what I can. But, um, and I'll let Chris take over from here on what we're going to continue to do. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, well, uh, we're working on a lot of stuff. Uh, um, I'm getting ready to put out to the public, and I, I said to I said to you, Amanda, and uh, you know, I said to Glenn. But I've been working on this for 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 a long time. You know, trying to put together uh, kind of a resistance handbook using the law, different aspects of you know, Virginia Constitution, United States law, natural law, common law, etc. And as kind of an overview of the aspect of the shadow government and how the people can neutralize them and different tactics to use, because I, I, I don't want to call myself a warrior, but I will say I'm engaged in war against my enemies, and my enemies are the leaders of the institutions that control the unlawful Zionist United States government. So... Basically, we we are definitely at war. They they are treating us like we're we're enemy agents at war. They're using tools of war against us. So that's what we're doing to them. And what we're doing is we're we're showing folks how to go out and how to engage with your servants because. These folks, they have to be amenable to us at all times. And if they aren't amenable, then then what 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 does one do with a servant who is who is hired to do a job and then you know hired to clean the house, but yet uh, 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 throws a bu bucket of water, uh, mop water on the ground and and takes a uh, a piss in the middle of the floor? Uh, are we supposed to treat them with respect? Are we are we supposed to? Uh, uh, are we supposed to, you know, say, hey, please continue to, to spy on us. Please continue to spray radioactive chemicals that manipulate the weather and that uh, spread disease all over us? No, that's not the way it goes. But we, we're, we're saying we've documented this stuff. It's our lawful standing to have control over all of this stuff. Destroy the... the unconventional weapons of war and control the conventional weapons of war because that's the way it's written into the law because the law says the people ordain the government and that the militia is the number one uh, law enforcement arm of the United States government. That's made of the body of the people. Yeah. Chris, I want to ask you, what are some of the constitutional laws that you think people are most confused about or don't know about? Okay, I, 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 this, it's pretty much everything because because what the Constitution is, it's not the rules for the citizens. I, I would never call myself a citizen because it's defined in, in Article, uh, excuse me, Amendment 14 as subject to the government. So I'm one of the people. I'm a man. Man creates government. But obviously, I think, number one, that people don't, comprehend or understand that the Constitution is not the rules for the people. It is the rules for the people's servants, the people who ordain the government. So therefore, we, we have a special position as, as, as uh, uh, God is the man, man is the government. So that's number one. Another thing is that, that where it's written into the law that these these amendments, these Bill of Rights, and talking about the United States Constitution, they're, they're only listed as certain enumerated rights, and they are not limited in any way. So they're just enumerated rights, and that the Second Amendment contains the words, the, the, the words necessary, and, and that's the only place where, where that word is, is, is used in regard to the law. And what the number one thing I'd like to highlight is Article 1, Section 13 of Virginia Constitution, and that talks about the militia. And it says the militia is, is the number one law enforcement, and that if 
the government exceeds the civil power, then, then that's the number one route to tyranny. So, uh, it's, those, those documents, if folks want to look up Article 1, Section 13 of the Constitution, if they want to look into, you know, the basis of common law and, and uh, uh, the fact that, that in no way can, can government have sovereignty or authority over people, and uh, it, it's really a topsy-turvy world, and that we need to start retaking our rights back because our rights come from God. I, I think that that's basically, anyone can figure this stuff out. Everyone born with an innate ability to, to you know, tell right from wrong. Uh, and if they're not, then they're sociopaths and that they're exceptions to the rule. But unfortunately, it's the sociopaths of the world that are running our government. But it, written into the law, it says in redundancy, in our law, in, in Virginia Constitution and U.S. Constitution, when government becomes tyrannical, that is the, the duty of the people to amend and or abolish it. And that's what we're doing right now. That, that's, the, that's the goal. That's the plan. We don't have any sort of political agenda or plan except for abolishing this unlawful government and exposing it in every way that, uh, that we possibly can. And we're, we're doing that. It's, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not difficult to, to expose this criminal government. They do it right out in plain sight. Right. And Glenn, I want to ask you a question. You are in the military, right? Yes. I was in the Army for... Yeah. Okay, so when right. you were in the Army, did you have to, you know, did you have to make an oath that you would protect the people? Yeah, so I had to take the oath so that when you first go in, they make you raise your hand and pledge an allegiance to the, you know, you pledge to the flag, and then you make an oath to, to uh, defend your country against all enemies, foreign and domestic. So, yeah. All right, so you took this oath. What does that oath really mean when they are allowing, the military is allowing chemtrails to be sprayed, the people to be poisoned, all this stuff to be happening, people being murdered and all this. What does that oath really mean? Oh, not really much. I mean, unfortunately, I've been, I've been contemplating this because it's like, okay, I did take an oath to that, and I did take an oath to the um, military intelligence, too. And, you know, it, it, I question the oath because... Knowing what I know now, the, the world, you know, is, the United States is an oligarchy, and you're, you're supposed to pledge allegiance to an oligarchy that goes out and murders their own people with these chemtrails. And with, well, in the Army, you go in and you get all these vaccines. You don't know what's in the vaccines. I saw people dropping out of line, getting sick. I'm sick. And some of that's probably, I've uh, been told, from the stuff that they inject you with, that you have no control because you're an animal in the Army. And you, you follow orders and you yes, sir, everything, and you go and do without question. And they expect little robots, and then they're going to replace humans with the robots. So they don't even need these humans now, so why not kill us all off? And, you know, and they're spraying everybody. It affects everything every day. I mean, this stuff rains down on us, and, you know, they're killing us, and they're making the bottom layer of the atmosphere into a petri dish and then hitting it with electromagnetic crap and all this other stuff. I mean, I got right now I got an electronic droid on the side of my house, an imperial droid called a smart meter. I can hear it in my head humming. I mean, it, it's that bad. So, yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's all over. So, yeah, but I have, getting back to the question, I have questioned that oath that I gave at the time thinking I was serving my country and then found out that I was serving the oligarchs. And no, I do not serve the oligarchs, but I do stand up for humans. Yeah. Okay, so now the government is guilty of commission. They're guilty of failure to act, the EPA and the police that we have informed of you know, these crimes. So what do we do in that case? Chris, do you have any advice for us when we're busting these people that are guilty of omission? Well... I mean, I, I guess the number one thing is to expose it as much as possible to always 
videotapes and, and or audio tapes every conversation that you have with any sort of government official all the time and absolutely especially when we are catching them in some sort of malfeasance which they're constantly doing they don't do anything but malfeasance and what I, what I would say is that we need to start organizing in groups in order to, to go at this together, but you know, we we come together and say, hey, we're gonna we're gonna start requiring all the information about what it is that you're doing, and we need to to you know speak about you, uh, uh, you know, turning over all the information and turning over all the assets you have because, as you said, these are military operations. The government is run by the military. The media is, a, is, a, is, a, is an arm of the, of the military intelligence, one world government, you know, entity. It, it, it is all a military operation. And, you know, from the pop music we hear to, to the, the sports that we watch, they're operations of propaganda, for the military state, and it just so happens that our military state is controlled by the Bank for International Settlements in Basel, Switzerland, which is a banking, uh, the central bank of the central banking cartel, and that, uh, you know, we don't really have any control of anything the government does, and that the government is engaged in war against us. We need to really start talking about these acts is act of war and, and not buy into any of this false terrorism because we know that the government uh, of the United States as part of a Zionist agenda is forwarding all of these, these false flag attacks that we referenced at the beginning of the interview. Um, and we need to move forward. We need to, you know, come together and require this of the government because when you ask things of the government, it, it, it doesn't work, because when you ask of something of someone, they're not there to serve you. You're there to serve them. We need to require things of the government. We need to call them every day. We need to have every, we need to have 10 or 15 people at every city council meeting who show up there, they're armed with their guns and armed with their cameras and, and do nothing but say, you're a criminal and, and have, and have the information to back it up on top of it too, because it's not just that I go up there and say, oh, you're a criminal and you're a tyrant and you're this, you're that. I know what I'm talking about, and that's what they don't like. And I've got a gun and I've got a camera. And if 2% of the population did what we were doing, the government would have been abolished last year. Wow. That's scary to think about, that it's our apathy as a society and probably fear of you know the unknown what could happen to us if we go against the grain um i do love your idea about going to these city council meetings i don't think enough people do it i've personally never been to one i would love to go so i think what we need to do is investigate when these meetings are get a group of people together and we need to do what you said we need to be a voice we can't just be posting on facebook and i know we don't just post on facebook we use facebook and we put what we're doing on it and stuff but we need to do more, like like on the field stuff. I agree. And actually, what, what we do have, I do want to say real quick, what we do have is we are operating. We we are the vanguard of of the militia movement. We are the militia movement because you know, one has to really comprehend and understand what that means. And also, many of us, uh, myself included, we have bloodline connections to the. Uh, Virginia militia, which was which was the last you know form of any sort of legitimate law in, inside the United States, but we also wish to reach out if there are legitimate sources out there because there's a cyber war going on and and, and you know all of this all of these military installations under the law that belong to the Virginia militia, they, you know the Pentagon infrastructure, the Eastern Fleet, the nuclear subs, the underground bases, and we want to reach out to those board hackers 
and we want to say, hey, look, board hackers, we've got some, you know, we've got some targets for you, and they're inside and outside of the United States, and they're underground military bases, and they're bar associations all around the world, and they're the real criminals. And if you want to find out who's pulling the strings on that, look into the World Zionist Federation and the, and, the, and the leadership of the Zionist international banking cartel that owns all the banks and all the media sources. And why don't, why don't they start, you know, we're, we're calling you out. If, if you're legitimate anonymous, those are your targets, those underground bases, the Bank for International Settlements. Well, uh, you know, where, where else are we going to hit? Oh, Israel. Israel is the, is the source of all the terrorism in the region, uh, uh, in the Middle East. They're the, they're the Israeli Secret Intelligence Service. That's what ISIS stands for. And the Federal Reserve Bank. You know, why don't we go after them? And why don't we just say, okay, see, we can shut down your electronic system. And now it's time for you to hand over the hard assets because we're the legitimate owners of that. We don't even know what the continuity of government plan is. Glenn, you want to try? I mean, sorry, Glenn. I was getting feedback. Did you say that? I was just saying, did you want to chime in? Oh, well, we also have to uh, stop Agenda 21. That's the big oh, thing definitely. that's going on is Agenda 21 that no matter who, what puppet they put in power up in an air, if it be Trump, if it be Hillary, uh, if it be some unknown that they're going to throw in, it doesn't matter. The agenda is still going to continue. Agenda 21, it has been brought in. It has been worldwide. That's part of what this chemtrailing is part of. It, 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 it wraps up everything, and people go, oh, well, when it comes in, it's like it's been in. It was just 20 years ago. I don't understand this when it comes in because we're already living under it, and it's getting worse. How much worse does it have to get, especially with 2020 coming up, which is the next step, and then 2045, and then 2050, and by 2050, we're living in the Hunger Games. I mean, it's, that's where it's heading. So uh, that agenda has to be thrown out completely, and we got to stop NAFTA, and we got to stop the TPP, and all these other illegal treaties that we know nothing about, and we got to start holding Congress and the executive branch of the government hold, hold everybody to what they said they're going to do and get back to the Constitution, get them back into it, and stop all this needless crap. Absolutely. Well, I, I'd like to chime in on that because, you know, I think I think we all comprehend that that uh, if, if the Congress is held accountable and the executive is held accountable on Article 3, Section 3, which states treason against the United States, shall insist only in levying war against them or adhering to their enemies, giving them aid and comfort. And, uh, uh, of course, we have to, you know, bring up 9-11 being carried out by, of course, all the leadership in the U.N. because it's the United Nations which, which dictates the orders to the United States military that, according to then, uh, Director of the Department of Defense, Leon Panetta, uh, who said that in front of the Senate, which is treason in and of itself. But of course, the 9 11 attacks, uh, the Boston bombing, the Sandy Hook shooting, all these things are treasonous events. They're all part of UN Agenda 21, as Glenn, you know, you know, what, you know, eloquently pointed out. And all of these things need to be stopped. And we, we, we need, we require that this out of control bus be be brought into a depart position because we can't say, oh please, please do this for us. We've got to go out and do it for ourselves. And what we need, what we require to do now is to say, hey look, hey let's look into the continuity of operations, which is what we are operating under right now. This is FEMA. Part of Homeland Security martial law. Those, those, the executive branch and and the the Congress. That's just window dressing. They don't. They're they're puppets. And we'll, you know, we need to really look into like Site R, Raven Rock Mountain Complex, 
Site C, and that's uh, uh, that's also part part of the Raven Rock Complex, which is part of Camp David. Um, you know, uh, uh, the next part of Pentagon Reservation, Site R and Site C, Norad, Cheyenne Mountain. You know, those places, they need to be, the information about everything about those places, the militia requires, we're putting that out there. We know government agents are listening. That's what we wish to have. And we wish to have control over everything that, that's going on there. The nuclear weapons, the, the, the uh, uh, psychotronic weapons. All of these places, uh, Mount, Mount Pony in, in Culpeper, you know, what you know, the Greenbrier, all these places. Mount Weather. The secret government. Oh. Yes, Mount Weather. Thank you. There's a secret government, and, and uh, um, we need to know everything about it because the government that they show us on TV, that's that's part of the psychological operation. That's part of Hollywood. That's not real. Those people aren't in control. Those people are puppets. And we, we wish to hold them accountable, but we wish to see where the real power lies. And, and that's, our, that's ours, and we'll take it. Yeah, these false flags are corrupting our real history. Sandy Hook is being written into the history books as an actual event that really happened. 9-11 is being written in, into the history books as terrorists with box cutters. We have to understand that they are writing our, our history, and it's all lies. So why would we believe the history books, you know, from before? Those are probably all lies, too. Okay, we're down to five minutes. We have five minutes left. I want to uh, point out something about this show. I did make a statement that there were no guest callers allowed to call in. But if you've ever been on this show before, you're always welcome to call in. It's just that we get trolled so much on this program, just like any program, so we can't allow guest callers just to randomly call in. But if you've ever been on this show before, you can always call in. So now that we've established that, um, I want to thank everybody that came on this show today. It was a beautiful show. I learned so much. I learned so much from all of you guys. Chris, um, seriously, I idolize you for your strength and for your passion, Glenn, for just never giving up. You guys, and uh, Glenn, also, I, I do want to point out that video that you made. You gave um, a speech at the, one of the city council meetings where you had a standing ovation. What was that video called? Um, I don't remember what it was. Um, <clears throat> that was when I was... Uh, I gave a speech before the city council when I was homeless because the city was supposed to help me right after the uh, murder of my friend in my front yard. And in the end, as usual, it was promise, 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 and nothing came about. And then they, we don't know who you are, but it was, as you saw in the video, all city council knew who I was. So saying they don't know who I am, that, that's, that's a bunch of BS. But I don't remember the exact name of the uh, video offhand. I just want to say how impressive that was, that you guys have the gumption and the balls to stand up against the authority, to stand up against these corrupt and treasonous figures that are running our government. And you do it with style. I love both of y'all. We have four minutes left. I want to give you a chance to plug your websites and any projects you're working on. We'll start with you, Chris. Oh, uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, you know, you, people would find me most on Facebook and my Richmond piece on YouTube. That's pretty much where I put everything out. Uh, I, I, do, I do a lot of videos. And there's 1,100 videos on there. So that's pretty much what I've been doing since I was uh, you know, a member of the Democratic Party and you know, sitting in, in, in uh, meetings with uh, congressmen in their office up to, you know, getting abducted by the Department of Homeland Security. So uh, it, it's a wide range. It's been out there for eight, eight or so, nine years. And basically we're forwarding that agenda. We, we're acting as a militia, the intelligence arm of the militia, and our information is, I mean, it's, it's good. It, we beat most other intelligence sources on uh, what's really going on. And it's not because we have the inside information. We just... We're good at what we do at analysis, so that's that's what I do, and we're just going to keep analyzing, uh, you know, analyzing the economy and and uh, geopolitics. Yes, eleven hundred videos on Richmond Peace. I highly recommend this channel to anyone. It is not just entertaining; it's educational, and you actually learn how corrupt our officials are. 
you show us when they try to frame you and all the other stuff. Thank you so much, Chris Dorsey. I'll go on to you, Glenn. Oh, thank you. Happy birthday. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, thank you. All right, Glenn, what about you? Oh, the easiest place to find me would be at uh, glennsutton.com. Um, <clears throat> my YouTube channel is Nelga at, on YouTube, and but the easiest place would be I have everything up on uh, glennsutton.com. You can get to my blog and and see the documentary that I was I've been working on about that uh, place, Hidden Valley, the condominiums that, from hell. Yeah, really. Wow. Thank you so uh -huh. much. For you know what I'm saying? You're you're fighting these tough issues, you know, with people that have like given up hope. That that man was has been working on this for how many years? Seventeen. Well, yeah, seventeen. Yes. Yes. Well, I really appreciate all of your efforts. I want to thank everybody for your birthday wishes. You guys have made this the best birthday ever. Thanks to Stephen Kelly for allowing us this platform and to Truth Cat Radio, all the other hosts that are on the channel. Um, and yeah, I guess with that, we'll wrap it up. Steven, I want to say bye to you on the air. Okay, Amanda, I'm here. here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Steven, so much. You're welcome. Happy birthday. I hope everybody, uh, I hope this was a memorable big 4 for you, and it'll be, we're going to archive this. It's going to go down in history. Thank you, Steven, and everybody. I appreciate it. Whenever you're ready, Amanda. All righty. And on that note, look up, wake up, and do something.